Hey everyone, I'd like to take a moment to discuss how you can secure your websites or web applications using a set of HTTP headers. And we're going to demonstrate this using Nginx, but you can just as easily use Apache. It's just that there's a slightly different syntax. So headers, it's interesting. There's a set of HTTP headers that you can set server side that will define or, or really tell the browser what's allowed and what's not allowed. So certain types of attacks, especially those that, uh, for instance, ex execute maybe malicious JavaScript on the client side will fail if you tell the browser that that particular attack or that particular script shouldn't be allowed to run. So I want to show you a set of headers and also a good site for evaluating whether your HTTP configuration is secure or really insecure. So let's go over to the demo machine and the site is securityheaders.com. And you can actually just enter, if you've got a public website, you can just enter it here. So I'm going to enter the IP address of a, an Nginx server that I just spun up a few seconds ago, and it, uh, it shouldn't be very secure. Yeah, so this is the default level of security uh, for your website if you don't define some, some headers. And those headers are the content security policy, X frame options, X content type options, referrer policy, feature policy. We'll go through each of those in turn. So the way to actually fix this, to get a better score from this website is, well, first you have to actually access your server. So let me get um, Putty up here. And in your server, you navigate to your, your where, wherever the configuration is for your website or web application. So in our case, it's gonna be V, Etsy, Nginx, sites-enabled, whoops, what do we have here? Sites-enabled and default. So this is, I just installed it, so we're still using the default here. And then right here under server, we can start to define headers. So let's talk about them each sort of in turn as we define them. So the first one is X content type options. So the way we can define this is by using the the directive add header, and we're gonna say x dash content dash type dash options, and we are going to in quotes say no sniff. So what this does is tells it tells the browser not to attempt to figure out what the content type of a particular file is on its own. So when when we send a file to a browser, we typically say this is HTML, this is CSS, this is JavaScript. But the, the browser still has a little bit of leeway to determine whether that's true. And it might decide that this, this particular file that we say is CSS is actually JavaScript. And then you can imagine that that might be, it might be used for evil, right? So what we can say is no, no, don't do that. Just use the content type that we provide. And that can reduce or mitigate certain types of attacks. So that's our X content type options. And the next one we're gonna add is X frame options. And we're going to set that to same origin, if I could spell correctly. So the X frame options tell the browser if there's frames on this particular page, right, that they should only be, in this case, that they should only be from the same origin, right? So we can't have this random frame from a, a sketchy origin from you know across the world and, and on a very different domain. It has to be on the same origin. So that's again useful and it will prevent certain types of attacks where maybe a, an attacker tries to get an extra frame injected into your web application or website somehow uh, so that they can do X, Y, or Z. So we say do not allow that, only allow frames from the same origin. And then we can add another header here that also starts with X. And this is gonna be x-xss protection. And we are going to, again, always in quotes, say one uh, mode equals block, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so we say one mode equals block. And what this says is our browsers actually have cross-site scripting protection and filtering built in. What this says is not only should you filter for cross-site scripting, but you should also just stop rendering the page completely. Just don't even display it if, they're, if you detect cross-site scripting. So it's kind of strict, 
but it's good to be strict when we're talking about security. So this will filter cross-site scripting, at least some variations of it. And the next thing we should add, just on the sort of the privacy front, is a referrer policy. And this is where we define or we tell the client browsers what information they should send back. And so for instance, we, we could say, we could just leave this undefined and maybe the browser just sends back all the information about the, the referrer, the, the sort of the resource that they accessed that led them to this new resource that they're requesting, if that makes sense. So it referred them to this, this, next, this next URL. So the referrer policy, we could set something like same origin and that would actually, and I believe there's a dash there, that would actually say only send this referrer information if they're kind of accessing something on the same origin. So that maybe a, a different origin that they might browse to from your website doesn't get detailed information about what specific resource they were accessing, right? So we can, this is kind of a privacy setting. And then there's two more, and these are a little bit more complicated, but I do want to point these out because they're probably the most powerful. So the first one is the feature policy, where we can define what features our website can or cannot access. And specifically with the feature policy, we really are providing a list of things that we're not going to be using and that should never be allowed or accessible. So for instance, we could say, in our feature policy, uh, microphone. And we would say none in, in single quotes followed by a semicolon. So this says, we'll never need the microphone. So regardless of where this request to access the microphone comes from, don't allow it. And we could say the same thing for camera. So we never need access to the camera. So let's just not allow it. And how about, what else? do you think we probably don't need? Maybe geolocation. And once again, we're gonna say none. So this uh, feature policy, there's a ton of different features. There's geolocation, camera, microphone, full screen, USB. What else is there? There's a ton of different features that you can actually disable that are potentially accessible through the browser. So if you don't need them, why even allow them to be accessed because if someone can again get something malicious running on that client browser they could potentially take advantage of the microphone if uh, we don't have this feature policy enabled so that is let me kind of make this a little larger so that's our feature policy and there's a lot of good documentation on specifically on mdn the mozilla developer network i think so you you could google that if you want and see what your options are as far as all of these different uh, response headers are concerned but the last one we want to add here is the content security policy. And this one can really break your website. So you've got to be careful. But what I'm going to do is just set this to, I'm just going to say default source is self, which is to say for all the content that we're, we're serving or that the, the browser is accessing, it has to come from this particular domain. Now that breaks a lot of things because you might be getting fonts from Google and it even breaks scripts. So if you've got scripts inside your HTML pages, it doesn't allow that by default. You have to specifically allow it. So when you define a content security policy like this, it could break a lot of things, but if you if you kind of troubleshoot it and go into the inspector with your particular browser and see what violations are occurring and then add the appropriate permissions, it's kind of a trial and error process. But if you go through all that and just allow the cont content from the sources that you define specifically, it can, again, it, it's a really strong mitigation against various attacks. So we'll see now if my syntax is, is correct, but those were the, the six headers that I wanted to point out, right? So we basically added those headers and I'm going to escape, right quit, and we then need to reload Nginx or Apache. And the way to do that typically if you have system D is system CTL reload Nginx. Okay, so that's a good sign so far, I think. It looks like Nginx didn't crash, so I didn't mess up the, the Nginx syntax too much, but what about the header syntax? So let's once again, I'm gonna do a shift control R to reload this and see what it says. 
ah, there we go. So we've got everything working. We've got our content type options, our X frame options, refer referrer policy, feature policy, and content security policy. So all that is really restricting what a browser will do. So we're telling the browser this, 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 and this you cannot do or you should not do, and it won't. So even if someone's able to get some malicious code to the, the client of our web application, it might not run if we really lock down features like these. So it's kind of an easy win for security. It uh, protects your, your consumers, your users, and I definitely recommend uh, just giving it a shot. So here is the, the website again, it's securityheaders.com, and they give you a nice little report card. So maybe in the future, we'll look at something a little different. So there's SSL Labs, and that's a little bit more involved, but you can also get a report card for the security of your SSL TLS configuration. And I've made a, a sort of habit or an addiction of making sure that I get an A plus for all my servers, all my websites in particular. So we'll probably check that out at some point, but this is an easy win here. And if we, here's Nginx and look at that. Let's see, it looks like the, the page is being rendered differently. So I wonder if we inspect here, and I'm not used to using, um, using Chrome, but if we go to the console, look at this. Refuse to apply inline style because it violates the content security policy. So this is what I'm talking about. The content security policy is gonna break all kinds of stuff. And we could actually fix this. So it tells us, it, it looks like it tells us that we can define a hash. So maybe, maybe we can do that. Maybe we can copy and paste that if, if it's telling us the, the appropriate hash. So let's try this. So our content security policy hash, let me make sure that I'm just getting the, the right syntax here. And here's Mozilla developer net, net, uh, network, by the way. So let me just control F for hash, hash algorithm. All right, so SHA-256 dash. All right, so it looks like it's giving us that. So now let's see if we can fix the content security policy. It's really nice that if this is the case, if Chrome's actually telling you what the hash is, it makes it a lot easier because hashing like blocks of uh, JavaScript or CSS can be difficult because you don't know where to like start uh, selecting the text, where to end, what exactly should be included in the hash. But let's, let's just try it and see if this actually works. So once again, I'm gonna go to our content security policy and we'll say default source self, and we can even say uh, style source. And we could say self, but I believe we can also say, oops, I need to figure out how to paste here. We could also say SHA-256 dash that, that it looks like base64 encoded hash. Okay, well, let's see if this works. So we'll right quit, uh, yeah, right quit here, reload Nginx. Let's see. Uh, no, it didn't, well, did it work? Did we reload it properly? Oh no, I don't wanna like, uh, okay, unsafe inline keyword. Well, no, a hash. So where did I mess up the, okay. Now I wanna make sure this, this actually works. So, where is an example with a hash? All right, so yeah, SHA-256. Ah, we had to include that in, we had to include that in single quotes. So again, I'm not pretending to be the guru of working with this, but if you kind of like poke back and forth between the inspector on your, on your, your browser and the Mozilla Developer Network, you can figure this out. So there we go. So SHA-256 followed by this particular SHA sum. Once again, we reload and let's see if it'll work this time. There we go. So by defining the hash, if we view the, the page source, by defining the hash of really this right here, uh, we can say that's allowed. That particular style is allowed when it's in line, just as long as the hash matches. So it's very much trial and error, checking syntax, making sure that you don't forget quotes or semicolons, but with that content security policy, even though it's a pain, once you get it up and running, it is very, very restrictive in a good way. It's, it's good for security. So hopefully that's helpful and we even got to troubleshoot a little bit. And I even got to see that Chrome gives you the hash, 
which was kind of amazes me and makes me really happy uh, because that's one of the more difficult things is uh, getting the hashes and making sure that you are hashing just what you need to hash because a single bit is off, a single extra blank character and the hash isn't gonna match. All right, so the just to recap here, X content type options, uh, what else? X frame options, X cross-site scripting protection, X XSS protection, referrer policy, feature policy, content policy. These are all headers that you can set. You can define on your, your server, Apache or Nginx or whatever else. And in doing so, you can make it much more difficult for attackers to compromise your application and maybe more specifically, the users of your application. So I hope that's helpful and I hope you have fun with that. I guess it depends on how you define fun. So I'll see you in the next video.